I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. of the incidents in the story you're about to hear are based on the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic. I spent nine long years living a lie, a lie called communism, and it was a frightening experience. Many a time, I wanted to rush up to you on the street, mister, and grab hold of your coat and shake you and yell, can't you see what's going on? Don't you realize what they're trying to do to our country and to you and your wife and kids? I didn't do it because I knew that at that time you wouldn't believe me. The lie had been told too well. You better believe me now, though, mister, or you may wake up some morning living or dying that same lie. The lie called communism. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabatic. Undercover Man. Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked The Kiss of Death. Constant tension is the lowest price you pay for being a communist, even a communist for the FBI. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you feel that you're being watched, spied upon, and that the Central Committee is getting a constant stream of reports on what you do, who you see, even what you eat. It's party discipline, self-enforced by fear. I have a date with an FBI agent, and as I walk to the meeting place, I'm haunted by the sense of being followed. For no tangible reason, my heart beats faster, my blood pressure pounds in my temples. I duck in and out of arcade, checking my back trail. I see no one that I recognize. Still, I'm out of breath when I round the last corner and find my FBI contact waiting for me in the car. After a last look over my shoulder, I get in the car beside him, and we take off. Think someone was following you, Matt? I always think someone's following me. Nothing new then, huh? Mm, nothing spectacular, anyway. We had another cell meeting since my last report. Getting more frequent, aren't they? Yeah, but nothing's happening. Nothing of any great importance at any rate. At this last meeting, we took in three new members and were notified of another special assessment. There have been a lot of assessments lately, haven't there? Yeah, and they've all been ordered by the state central committee instead of by national headquarters. State, huh? Uh, any indication of what they're for? Oh, uh, not yet. Well, if they're building up a war chest, they may be going to back some candidate against Senator Stewart. No, oh, he's too strong. They wouldn't waste the money. The fact is, they seem to have given up on Senator Stewart. What? Well, if the word's come down to lay off the character assassination. Then they have a new idea they think is better. Could be. It has to be. They never give up on any man in public office who has done them as much damage as Stewart has. Yeah, you're probably right. Check into the reason behind these special assessments, Matt. Maybe there is something spectacular cooking. <laughs> I asked Johnson to let me out of the car several blocks from home so that I can get some exercise walking. And as I walk, I think. But no matter how much I think, I can't connect the special assessments with Senator Stewart. Back in my room, I give up thinking and stretch out on the bed. I'm about to doze off when a knock at the door sends me to my feet. It's Comrade Hobart, my cell leader with a message that will eventually lead me to the reason for those special assessments. Sorry to disturb your rest, Comrade Savetic. Why? I wasn't asleep. There's a meeting at my house tonight. 
I hope it's more important than the last two or three, Comrade Hobart. You, you're not tiring of party activity, Comrade. No. I'm glad to hear that. For a moment... I'm tiring of party inactivity. I should have known. There are plans in the making, Comrade Svetik, which should satisfy even your craving for action. What are they, Comrade? I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to divulge them, even to you, until they're complete. However, uh, Yes? I can almost promise that they will be complete before tonight's meeting. Be sure to be there. I'm at the meeting, all right, long before anyone else arrives, except Comrade Hobart, and it's his house. I don't learn anything about plans, though. It's strictly a routine meeting, as far as I can see. A couple of comrades report on their activities in various front organizations, but I hear nothing that sounds like new activity. And I don't until the meeting is adjourned and the members are leaving. I'd like to have you wait until after the others have left, Comrade Svetik. Okay. It'll be a couple of minutes before they're gone. Uh, why don't you wait for me in the kitchen? Anything you say. Hello. Comrade Corbin. Did you know that the others were leaving? Well, I hope they were. I was asked to wait, too, Comrade Svetik. Any idea as to what it's all about? No more than you. Maybe not as much. I couldn't even guess. And wouldn't if you could, huh? Well, the others are gone, comrades. We can be on our way now. On our way? Where are we going, Comrade Hobart? We're driving to the state capitol for a conference with the state central committee. Right now? Immediately, Comrade Svetik. I received a phone call just before you arrived this evening, advising me that the plans I mentioned to you are complete. Well, can you tell us what they are, Comrade? Sorry, Comrade Corbin, I don't know the details. I know only that they involve Senator Stewart, and that once they're set in motion, no one, not even Comrade Svetik, will have cause to complain about lack of activity. All I can think of as we get into Comrade Hobart's car and drive to the state capitol is that Johnson, my FBI contact of that afternoon, was right. I want to call him and congratulate him, but there's no chance. Not even when we get to the Capitol. Nordstrom, the chairman of the state central committee, has waited up for us. He gives us the word and sends us back home that night. I still can't see why Nordstrom wouldn't let us stay overnight. There's less chance of our being spotted by the FBI at this time, Comrade Corbin. But if the plan is... Comrade Sovetic is right, Comrade. The essence of the committee's plan is timing. A premature exposure would ruin everything. Do you uh, like the idea, Comrade Zavetic? I think it can be very effective, Comrade Hobart. Very effective. However, as you just said, a premature exposure would defeat us completely. Completely, Comrade. That is why the committee took the precaution of having us drive to the Capitol at night and gave the details of the plan only to us three. No one else will know? No one. But we're to use other party members. We will tell them what to do, not why they do it. Well, in that case... If details of the plan should leak out, one of us must be guilty. Obviously, Comrade Savetti. Well, why the sigh, Comrade? Relief, I guess, Comrade, knowing that we needn't worry about betrayal. It would be extremely unpleasant for anyone who betrayed this plan, Comrade. It is the perfect formula for giving Senator Stewart the kiss of death. If the Central Committee's plan works, it is the perfect scheme for eliminating Senator Stewart from public life. In fact, if it is not exposed prematurely, it can be used against any political enemy of the Communist Party. And only three of us, Comrade Hobart, Comrade Corbin, and I, know the details. As soon as we get back to our city, I call the FBI and report. But Johnson can give me no help at the moment. Oh, this is big, Matt. I know that. It's too big for any snap judgment. You have to play it by ear until we have a chance to try and formulate a counter scheme that can be used without exposing you. Any suggestions? Uh, none except to redouble your usual caution. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. When Johnson hangs up, I feel more lonesome than ever. I hang around my room hoping he'll contact me before I have to go to Comrade Hobart's house for another meeting. But he doesn't, and the tension begins to build again. Only three of us know the plan. Not many to share the suspicion that the plan is upset. I wonder if anyone saw me go into that phone booth or come out. Or overheard me talking to the FBI. By the time I get to the meeting that night, I'm jumping at shadows. And the meeting is in progress. 
And now, comrades, we come to the real purpose of this meeting. Consideration of Senator John Stewart. In our efforts to eliminate this vicious enemy of the world's democratic and peace-loving peoples, we have suffered a serious defeat. Spurred by pandering editors of the captive capitalistic press, the stupid bourgeoisie have closed their eyes and ears to any criticism of Senator Stewart. Now he is running for renomination, basing his campaign almost entirely on his reactionary opposition to communism. At the moment, it appears to be impossible to defeat Senator Stewart in the usual way. Therefore, our brilliant leaders have evolved a plan which will permit us to use Senator Stewart. To this end, our cell has been ordered by the State Central Committee to join forces with our enemies. Comrades, comrades! Comrade Savetti, please join me here. I want you to tell the comrades what is expected of them. Right. If you quiet down, I'll give you your orders. In the first place, we're not joining forces with Senator Stewart for the purpose of putting him in office. But Senator Stewart belongs to one of the major political parties. I don't see how we can possibly hope to capture an organization of that size. It isn't necessary for you to see, comrades. In fact, my advice is don't try. Better brains than yours or mine have worked out the details of this plan. And if each of us follows his orders unquestioningly, we cannot fail. I accept the rebuke, comrade Savetic. What are our orders? Well, that's better. The first thing each of you will do is to register as members of the senator's political party. <laughs> if you're registered in another party, change your registration tomorrow. Your next move is to join the ward club of the senator's party in your ward and work hard for the renomination of Senator Stewart. This will defeat so it, Comrade Savetic. If you follow instructions and work hard enough, Comrade... We'll not only defeat Senator Stewart, we will have proved a weapon we can use successfully against any reactionary who opposes communism. to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sivetic in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. The strongest point of a dictatorship is that it gets things done. Of course, rights are obliterated, property is confiscated, citizens are imprisoned and executed without trial, but things get done. The dictatorship exerted over members of the Communist Party, even here in America, is no exception to that rule. Two days after they received their orders, every member of our cell had registered as a voter in Senator Stewart's party. And meeting with Comrade Corbin and myself, cell leader Hobart reports that the State Central Committee is pleased. The committee is satisfied with the manner in which we have executed the preliminary step of the plan, comrades. I now have orders for the next step. The committee has furnished you with details, comrades? Mm, they gave us an overall plan, Comrade Savetic. The details have been left to the three of us. First, there's the matter of timing. The committee wants the exposure to be made on the day before the election. That will allow every voter to hear that Senator Stewart has been actively supported by party members. And there won't be time for them to hear his denial. That's right. No one ever pays attention to denials anyway. People are much more interested in scandal. Some newspapers discovered that a long time ago. The next point is perhaps even more important than the matter of timing, the method of exposure. I've been wondering how we were going to handle that without tipping the whole scheme. The committee has a scheme, brilliant in its simplicity, if we can work it out. That's your if for the committee's, Comrade Hobart. Mine, Comrade Corvin. The committee permits no ifs. What's the plan? One of us is to establish contact with some important member of the group in Senator Stewart's own party, opposed to his renomination. 
after gaining this person's confidence, will furnish him with documentary proof of Senator Stewart's communist support and permit him to make the exposure. Just how are we to establish this contact, Samanova? That, Comrade Savetic, is a detail that the committee has left to us. I want the assignment of making this contact because this is the key to the whole plan. But Comrade Corvin volunteers before I do. I try to draw him out on how he intends to make his contact and with whom. But he's too cagey. And since there's nothing more to discuss, the meeting breaks up. And on my way home, I phone the FBI. Johnson speaking. I'm calling from a phone booth, Johnson. The news is bad. Go on. The documentary proof of Stewart's red backing will be made public through a member of the senator's own party. Uh Uh-oh, that'll take time to refute. That's the plan. Who's the member of the senator's party who'll make the charges? I don't know. Comrade Corvin, the unfriendly witness, is going to make the contact. Well, that helps. Shouldn't be hard to prove what he's up to. Yeah, once we know his contact. I don't have an agent available tonight, but I'll put a tail on Corbin first thing in the morning. Well, that should do it. In the meantime, if there's even the slightest change in the situation, phone. Johnson doesn't wait for me to phone him, though. The next day, as I leave my place, a car pulls up alongside me, and Johnson says... Get in, Matt, quick. picking up so close to home, Matt, but this is urgent. What happened? We can't find Corvin. What? I sent an agent over to his place early this morning. When Corvin didn't show by noon, the agent phoned his rooming house and learned that he checked out late last night. He must have been suspicious of my questioning. Something happened. Under the circumstances, Matt, I hate to ask this, because you may be sticking your head right into the lion's mouth. But we have to know where Corvin is so that we can trail him to his contact. Yeah. I'll see what I can find out, Johnson. Good. Has the Bureau figured out its counter scheme yet? Not yet, Matt. It's a tough problem, but I understand they're going to decide one way or the other sometime today. I'll probably be able to give you the word when you report on Corvin. When you report on Corvin. What he meant was, if you report on Corvin, then unconsciously I start thinking of ways to avoid seeing Comrade Hobart. But when you're a communist for the FBI, there's no turning back. So I go to Hobart's house. He doesn't act suspicious, so I lead the conversation around to Corvin. He's a valuable man, Comrade Savetic. No question about that. And full of surprises. Apparently, he has an acquaintance in Senator Stewart's party opposition who just fits our plan. Has he said so? Not in so many words. However, he called me this morning to report that he had his contract. And it moved. Where'd he move to? <laughs> When I asked him, he said he'd tell me after he completed his mission. Right now, he's developing his contact and avoiding all party members. Who is his contact? Obviously, someone of importance. But uh, just who is Comrade Corvin's secret? He didn't tell me, and frankly, I don't want to know. Why not? Well, I wouldn't care to share the responsibility, Comrade Savetti. You and I will keep our necks. Let Comrade Corvin keep his secret. <laughs> Let Comrade Corvin keep his secret. That's the one thing I can't do. Later that night, I meet Johnson, my FBI contact, and while we're driving around the outskirts of town, report my lack of progress concerning Corvin. Have you anything else to report? The money from all those special assessments made by the State Central Committee has come back to the cell with interest. Huh? It's being contributed to Stewart's campaign fund. They don't miss a bet, do they? They're no amateurs, that's a cinch. Has the Bureau worked out their counter scheme yet? Yeah. I don't like it, and neither will you. What is it? Well, it looks as though you're stuck, Matt. Go on. It's a matter of political values. If this scheme isn't exposed before the Reds are set, the nation will lose a valuable man from public life. And I'm an expendable. I guess the military would call it that. 
Naturally, we'll give you all the protection possible, Matt. When are you going to break the story? Late Sunday for Monday morning's paper. That way we'll beat the commies by about eight hours on their release. Sunday. This is Thursday night. Well, it gives me Friday and Saturday. Oh, what are you figuring on? Corbin. If I can find out who his contact is, the guy he's going to break the story to, I can break the story myself. Oh. By phone. I'll call the man and tell him that I'm Corvin and give him the expose with all the details. Yeah. There's only one thing wrong with the idea, Matt. What's that? You don't even know where Corvin is, much less the name of his contact. <laughs> Johnson's right. I don't know where Corvin is, and I don't dare ask Hobart again. The tough part of it is, I can understand the FBI's position, particularly after talking with Comrade Hobart the next morning. Everything is complete now, Comrade Savetic. Our workers are publicly identified with Senator Stewart. We have receipts for more than $2,000 contributed to his campaign fund. And Comrade Corvin reports that his contact in the opposition camp is beginning to take the bait. Well, I hope Corvin plays his hand right. If he puts out too much bait, his fish may bite before we're ready. I had that in mind when I told you that I wanted to know nothing about Conrad Corvin's operation. If anything goes wrong, he'll take the discipline. If anything goes wrong, Corvin will take the discipline. But only if it goes on before Sunday. On Sunday, it'll be my neck. I leave Comrade Hobart to make my check on our party members working for Senator Stewart. And as I check, I can fully understand why the FBI has to break the story immediately. The workers themselves, however, don't realize how big a job they've done. Well, I still don't see how this can hurt Stewart, Comrade Savetic. Now, how can this do him anything but good? You'll be told at the proper time, Comrade. Sure, that's what Comrade Corbin tells me. Every day I ask him, what goes? Every day like you, he tells me nothing. You see Comrade Corvin every day? Like a calendar. He calls on a fella who lives two doors from me. Bring him into the party, I guess, like he did me. <laughs> sure. Uh, you live on Oak Street, don't you? Oak Street? Cedar, 400 blocks south. As quickly as I can, without arousing suspicion, I get away from the talkative comrade and go to the 400 blocks south on Cedar. For five hours, I wait and see nothing. Then, in the middle of the afternoon, I finally spot Comrade Corbin going into a house with another man. They're far down the block, though, and I have to get closer to see the street number. I keep my eye on the house as I walk, so I don't notice anything around me until a heavy hand falls on my shoulder and a voice says, What's your name? What are you doing here? Now, look, officer. Whatever I... you have to say, you can tell to the desk sergeant. So what am I supposed to have done? The neighbors complained about suspicious characters loitering around the neighborhood. The other one seems to have got away, but I'm taking you down to the station. I try to break away and make a dash to where I can get the street number of the house Corvin entered, but the policeman is too fast for me. Thinking of the way I've had my only chance to save myself from the red snatched out of my grasp, I blow my top and I try to fight my way free. But it's no use. The cop's a big man, and he knows what to do with his beef. The next thing I really know is that I'm locked in a cell. Sore and bruised. Finally, hours later, the cop comes back. Hey, you cooled off any, mister? Yeah. I'm sorry I blew up. Can I use the phone? Want to call your lawyer, eh? No, just, just a friend. Okay. Stand back while I open the door. Come on out. Walk ahead of me. That way. <laughs> I got over here as quickly as I could, Matt. Oh, I wasn't quick enough, Johnson. I kind of got roughed up. I had it coming to me, but... I've forgotten the house I was looking for. I haven't, Matt. Huh? After our talk last night, I was afraid you might take some pretty desperate chances, so I tailed you today. Oh, that cop said there was someone else hanging around who got away. <laughs> me. I saw him coming. Anyway, Matt, I got the address and the name of Corvin's contact. I had a talk with a bureau chief, Matt, and he wants you to make the call and prematurely spill the story of the Reds and Senator Stewart. 
That's great, Johnson, except for one little detail. Oh, what's that? First, you'll have to get me out of jail. The party gave Comrade Corbin full credit for the premature exposure of the plot against Senator Stewart. I don't know for certain what happened to him. I only know that he disappeared. And that if I hadn't been lucky, it would have been Matt Savetic who disappeared. A communist for the FBI is a man on a tightrope. And on a tightrope, you walk alone. Turn in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews. The technique of communism is the technique of conquerors and would-be conquerors since the dawn of history. It's the old technique of divide and rule. Don't let it happen here. Although to protect innocent persons, the names, dates, and places in this story are fictitious, the danger they warn you against is very real. Next week, we'll bring you another strange adventure based on the fantastic experiences of Matt Svetic. Join us then, won't you? (laughs) 